Well, hello there. We are in lecture three on Greek tools, or better known as Greek morphology. Uh, a couple of things right at the outset here of this uh, third lecture. There are two people who are instrumental in Greek morphology, instrumental in our study of scripture. And I'm going to start with, um, with both of these guys. The first one I want to start with is one of the Archbishops of Canterbury. His name was uh, Stephen Langton. And um, Stephen Langton's pretty famous as far as church history is concerned. He's a guy who took on King John in England, and thus being one of the Archbishops of Canterbury, he was uh, named by Pope Innocent III, and uh, he stood up to King John. So much so that he becomes the co-author of the Magna Carta uh, of 1215. However, what's important about uh, Stephen Langton is that every single Bible that you and I have divided into chapters has Stephen Langton to thank. Uh, the Bible was not separated into chapters at all, of course. It was separated by books. Um, some 773,000 words, 1,189 chapters were the divisions of Stephen Langton. He's the one who, who started separating them. Um, like I said, being part of the Magna Carta and serving as Archbishop of Canterbury in 1200 up to about 1228, um, he becomes pretty instrumental. Whenever you say, take your Bibles and turn with me to John chapter 3, well, you have Langdon to thank for that. The second guy is Robert uh, Stephanus, but uh, Robert Stephanus is better known by his actual name, which I want to say it correctly, it's Etienne. Um, Estienne. He was a publisher. He lived in France and uh, actually did a lot of publishing of the Textus Receptus in 1550. The reason we need to know Robert Stephanus um, is because we have verses in the Bible and he was the first guy to do that. He did it in the Textus Receptus that he printed 1550 and then he did it in the first English Bible 1560. Um, but the division of verses, when you say, take your Bibles and turn with me to John chapter 3, verse 4, that's because of Robert Stephanus. Um, this publisher for, did work for Calvin, obviously. Um, published his institutes and books by Calvin, French Bibles, etc. But he actually put in the verse divisions. Again, our Bibles didn't even have those until just about 500 years ago. So Greek morphology doesn't take into account verses and chapters. That came many, many, many years later. Greek morphology is a study of how the words are arranged, how the Holy Spirit inspired the writers, so that, um, depending on the book, the theme may change. For instance, Galatians, six chapters, <clears throat> it has freedom from legalism as one of its major themes. You know, he talks about those who tried to circumcise people uh, after they were saved. But what you're getting today uh, in your notes is a document, a 10-page document, that will become the project through the end of this block of classes. The document is on Romans, five final chapters of Romans. As you know, Romans 1 through 8 uh, set the doctrinal standard for the entire book takes us from sin to salvation, and then there is therefore now no condemnation. Then Romans 9, 10, and 11 are a parenthesis in the middle of the book dealing with Israel and the eternal covenant that God has, Abrahamic, Mosaic, etc., the covenant that God established with a stiff-necked, hard-hearted people. But there's a transition that takes place in the beginning of Romans 12 when he says, I beg you, therefore, I beseech you, therefore, my brothers, uh, upon the mercies of God. And so, from there to the end of the book, again, chapters notwithstanding, but from that transition word, the therefore, uh, what we call the Hody Clause, I have laid it out for you in a 10-page document so that you can begin working on this final project, which is... Uh, looking into how I structure my study of Scripture. 
Structure is, 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 semantic structural analysis is just a way of talking about how you take the sentences. Um, it is a method of biblical study that starts with the smallest part, say a sentence of scripture, uh, a clause even. But you start with a word, then you stretch to a clause, then you stretch to a sentence, then you go to what we would call a paragraph. And as you're doing so, you're, you're actually unpacking what the scripture says. Greek tools is the methodology of using any one of those free websites that allow you to search by word. And as you do so, you start finding out that certain words keep appearing in certain authors, again, as the Holy Spirit inspired them. And one of the keys of seeing how, uh, say, Paul writes, if you remember from the very first lecture, is the use of the term therefore, or John's use of the word no, gnosis. Uh, gnosko, um, like prognosis, diagnosis, um, beloved, terms like this. Uh, these terms become transition words. They become keys, symbols. The use of, um, if you remember the in Christ phrase, the King James, again, 773,000 words. In the King James Bible, love is mentioned 310 times. Faith, 336 times. Heart, 826 times. Pray, in all of its forms. Pray, praying, prayed, 375 times. Um, you start seeing a developing pattern. Starting with smaller books, or in this case, a portion of a book, you start seeing a pattern that the author uses under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that defines his theme, that defines what he's trying to pass on, which is, of course, authorial intent. Next week, I'll be giving um, some PowerPoint presentations to you, and those PowerPoints uh, talk about how inspiration takes place in Scripture. It's how to defend uh, the inerrancy and infallibility of Scripture. And in so doing, it gives us um, more tools, it gives us more ability to defend when we say, well, the Apostle Paul says this under the inspiration of God, and, and we believe, as an example, 2 Timothy 3, all scripture is theonusta, God breathed. Theo, T-O, T-H-E-O, like theology. Nusta, pneumatic, spirit, wind, God breathed. And, and so using word studies, uh, repetition of terms, transition words, exclamations, we start noticing in Scripture that certain themes arise from the constant redundancy or the constant referral back. Now, for this week, all I want you to do is print out this 10-page document. I've given it a four-inch margin on the right-hand side. <clears throat> it's what I like to do when I'm doing, say, a, a study through a book. Um, and I do it for as many people who want to print it out, um, or sometimes I even print it for them. And um, when I'm doing a study, when you do this, it gives them room to, to take notes. I don't know about you, but wide margin Bibles just aren't wide enough for me anymore. So um, this document doesn't have it set up like a text box. You can feel free to do that. But as you go through it, I'm sending it to you as a Word document. Begin to format it the way you want to format it. If you need some help on formatting, that's entirely fine. But what I'm looking for you to do, what I want you to be able to do, is to begin to design, define, distinguish the different terms of Scripture, the different usages, and as an example, or as a summary example, um, I'd like you to use an underline, maybe use a highlighter, but to go through at the end of Romans 15 and 16 and highlight the number of times he uses the phrase salute. Salute, salute, salute the brethren. And then he names the brethren. He's saying salute because we're going to come back to that uh, toward the end of the fifth week, I believe, in this class. But the document that I'm sending to you is, is again, divided in chapters and verses, which, as you know by now, um, wasn't even part of Scripture. And secondly, the word structures 
will start jumping out of the page for you. There are certain words that you want to define. And those words I'm going to talk to you about highlighting in a certain way. And then there are certain words, certain phrases, certain repetitions. Like I said, the term salute. Uh, that catch your eye. At the next lecture, uh, lecture number five, I believe it is, or four or five, um, I'll come back to that. And we'll look at idioms, the term for heart, uh, etc. So uh, this is a shorter one, 10 minutes, and I hope that you're having a good week in the study of scriptures. God bless you.